best, but when you play, I'll make yours bigger. Okay. Hello, great. everybody. It went live before I expected. Hello, Facebook, YouTube, and any Instagram fan family that watches. Um, sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. I have worked a lot today, trying to catch up from being off yesterday. All you people that follow me, you know, I had a little bit of a rough day yesterday. I took my son to college. So my last child at home. So of course, this is my baby. I have five kids. So it was my last one, took him off to school. So it was a little bit of an emotional day yesterday, but much better today, but gave me a busy day at work. So, all right, with us tonight, we have Christian. Is it Christian? Am I saying it right? Okay. Yep. One to make sure. Sorry, I should have asked you before. Christian Montgomery, and your band is called I'm Blank. Winter yeah, Kill. Winter. My gosh. Yeah. I've only seen that 10 times today. Winter Kill Band. Um, I came across Christian a while back. We've had this interview set up for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Came across you a while back. I can't even remember what song it was that I heard. And I was like, whoa, I like this guy's sound. Um, it's different. You're definitely not mainstream country by any means. Um, mm -hmm. A little bit of old country crossed with rock. Yep. Old rock. And definitely some of the Beatles influence in there. Some of that type of sound. Um, so you're definitely different. I could hear you on the radio and know it was you. Yeah. And yep. that's what I love when I pick like my favorite singers or people that I gravitate more to. Hey, Jovan, I knew you would be here. I was waiting to see you pop on. Um, Jovan is from Scotland and oh. he watches every interview that I do. So I knew he would be on here and he has a show similar to mine. Um, so good to have you on, Jovan. Um, anyway, I was saying, yeah, your music is totally different than you know, what's out there right now on any of the country stations or rock stations. Um, you yeah. almost have a channel of your own. Yeah. It, which is, uh, I suppose good um, and bad. Um, well, good. Cause you can cross over to both the genres. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my, my first concert ever was Larry Gatlin and the Gap when I was. Uh, yes. I love them. You no. Know, and my, my grandparent, my mother's family are uh, from Wigtonshire, Scotland. And my dad, oh. my dad is from Copenhagen, Denmark. And um, so I grew up with a huge Celtic influence. Um, so, the, you know, uh, it's, there's definitely a, uh, an influence there. Um, but I, I love old rock and roll. I mean, from the Beatles to Roy Orbison to, uh, Chuck Berry, um, but I, I also love the heavy guitars of Soundgarden and um, Monster Magnet and all these other crazy bands that, uh, I, you know, Queens of the Stone Age, um, um, those guys are huge influences as well as uh, some of the predecessors of rock and roll. But, um, you know, we, and you like we, some of the like 80s classic rock too, because one of your songs starts off with um, Queen. Yes, uh, Freddie Mercury is one of my all-time favorite singers. I mean, the way he layered his vocals and yeah. just his, his approach towards songwriting was amazing. And so it was cool. I got to uh, I got to pay a little homage to him. Uh, too. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely picked that up like right away because um, I'm a huge Queen fan. I mean, I'm a '70s, '80s, '70s baby, '80s teenager. So um, that's definitely my era. Uh, so mm -hmm. I love that. Um, well, let's just go ahead and kick it off and let you just play something for us so people will know what I'm talking about with your sound. And then we'll talk some more. All right. Well, this one is a brand new one. Um, I wrote this song um, whilst uh, traveling through Mexico, of all places. But uh, it's a pretty cool little uh, rockabilly tune. All right. Mm -hmm. 
because I know I didn't hear that earlier. So that's not released yet. Not yet. That's brand new. Um, um, I'm actually finishing up a 10 song record as we speak. Um, that's called the Prince of Poverty. And uh, this one is uh, on the follow up to that. We've got, we've already got another uh, 12 songs that we were going to do after that one. So wow. Yeah. We, uh, we're just trying to stay as busy as possible. And if I can release three or four albums in a year, um, that's like a, a pandemic record. Yeah, so. for real. <laughs> I mean, most people are doing good if they release one a year. Yeah. yeah. Much less three or four. My goodness, Christian, you are busy. <laughs> I love that. I love that tune i definitely i wrote that down i am going to remember that one um so that's going to come out on the album not as a single no that's um that one of the things about my particular songwriting too is um i'm not a big fan of singles i'm a fan okay. of i right. like i like um i like albums they are descriptive of a period of time in your life Whereas a single is just a fleeting moment. Um, right. And I mean, there's a time and a place for singles. Don't get me wrong. But um, when you listen to an album and you can hear um, connections between the songs, that's that's one of the biggest turn ons for me when it comes to music is being able to say, so you went through this, then they wrote about that and then they moved on to this. Um, that That's where I'm at. I mean, especially with everything I've gone through in my life and places I've traveled. And I, you know, a magazine recently said that I made Hemingway look like a Cub Scout. Um, you know, my my records are about a period of time in my life. Right. That the Gravel Church was was in my past the day it was released. And, uh, you know, now I've moved on. Um, I mean, like we all do. I mean, you know, from tragedy to you know, overcoming it and moving right. on. And that's what I've, 
So. Okay. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to touch on the past a little bit, but oh, then yeah. I want to hear like, so before your middle song, we'll talk about that. And then after that, we're going to go to what's coming. Um, because I loved your story that I read um, and I was making sure I got something recent. Um, and if there's something more recent, I apologize, but this was in July. Um, the Wicked Local. <clears throat> yeah, that was uh, the newspaper. The Patriot Ledger was the, uh, was the pa paper that published it. Um, the Wicked Locals are like, a, um, you know, town tabloids, but uh, okay. Patriot Ledger. The Patriot Ledger was the initial was you know and Jay Miller from the Patriot Ledger, he um, right. he was the gentleman who wrote the story. Um, okay, I was but, inspired when I read your story. Thanks. Um, yeah, really inspired when I read your story, and I was reading it, and I was like, okay, I'm really intrigued and looking forward to this interview, um, because of course the title caught my attention. And yep. so Jay did a great job because that's exactly what he's supposed to do to get us to read the article. Um, so the title, of course, is Christian Montgomery fought the law and his music won. I yep. love that because, well, let's we'll go backwards so that people know what that means. Um, you had a difficult divorce. Many of us can relate to that. And yep. you had children that you had to pay child support for. Mm -hmm. Again, many can relate to that. And you are a diabetic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a type one diabetic. I, I wear an insulin pump and, uh, um, you know, my, my biological father made it to 54 before he passed away from complications with diabetes. Um, so time has always been, um, you know, uh, I can relate to, to guys like BB King who, you know, live with type one diabetes and others. And, um, you know, we tend to live in, on average, 15 years less than the average person. So if, uh, you know, 72, you know, we're, we're somewhere in the, you know, um, we're somewhere in the late fifties as far as, you know, that's concerned. But I mean, some people make it longer, some people shorter. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I asked, I asked, uh, um, you know, uh, for a slight modification and, uh, um, it was denied and I made, I made the mistake of reaching out to a judge and telling him what I thought. <laughs> and they, <laughs> you know, so, I mean, it, it was, uh, it was healing at this. I mean, it was an awful experience. Don't get me wrong. And I would, uh, I, I got to tell you, I mean, I've met so many people there that probably shouldn't have been there. I mean, there was all, you know, people suffering from, from addiction, there was people who uh, had been, um, you know, thrown in there for so many different reasons. I, and it seems like we just do that here in the United States now. We just throw people away really quick. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, there isn't a lot of empathy and there's not a lot of love um, regarding our fellow man. So, uh, yeah. but I mean, you know, I I was approached by a 20-something-year-old uh, drug addict while I was while I was in there. Um, regarding my snoring and uh i uh i had to defend myself and i did pretty damn well did some time in solitary confinement for knocking him out and uh and then um you know i mean granted i was only there for a little less than six months um right. but it, it was enough it was enough to show me kind of the underbelly of our country that and and to see all these forgotten people and it was just awful um yeah uh, when I got out, the first thing I did was uh, try to uh, get back uh, to being a dad and set a good example. And so I decided what better way to do that than to uh, than to write a record and to, uh, you know, get my story out there so that people could, uh, you know, people could hear me. And, and, yeah. and hope, hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to help somebody if they're going through something similar. So. Exactly. Well, you had, you know, we, we talk about, and we, I use that loosely because not me, but people talk about deadbeat dads, you know, dads that don't pay child support. And yeah. uh, 
I'm familiar with one of those. Um, and he had no reason to be that way other than he chose to be that way. You didn't yeah. choose to be that way. Diabetes, no. and, and I'm not saying you were a deadbeat dad. Let me clarify that. Um, you were behind on child support for legit reasons or asked for a reduction for legit reasons. Well, you were uh, in the hospital because of your diabetes. Yeah, I was, I, I, uh, I had lost a couple of jobs, um, but I, I always caught up on support. Um, one of, one of the things here in Massachusetts and, uh, um, you know, I'm not a big fan of, uh, the, the government in Kentucky, um, as far as, uh, uh, its leadership, you know, Mr. Mitch McConnell, but, um, I am a big fan of something that happened there in Kentucky. They passed a law that in the event of a divorce, mom gets the kids half the time, dad gets the kids the other half of the time. And mm. then the, the funny thing is, is, is that since that has happened, protective orders have decreased by 60%. Wow. So there's, some, there's something to be said for when you tell, I mean, and granted, we choose to have children with who we have children with. We're making a, a choice, you know. Right. Um, and uh, we have to take responsibility for our individual choices. So I'm a firm believer that when you and, and of course, I grew up, you know, a product of divorce. My parents split up and my dad went to Florida mm -hmm. and my mom in Massachusetts. And, um, but I'm a I'm a huge advocate as far as, uh, you know, you, you got to just you know, you made these decisions. This is your life. You can't change who your ch children's parent is. Um, right. So you should split the time half half of the time. I mean, and especially now women have struggled so hard to try to get equal pay for equal work and all this other all of the same rights as men. Um, you would have to think that it would just make sense to uh, everybody just to say, well, we're getting divorced. You get the kids half the time. You get the kids the other half of the time. Make it work and stop complaining because it's what's right. best for the kid. But exactly uh, what's best yeah. for the child. Right. So. Um, I was a lobbyist for a bill here in Massachusetts, and uh, I, I'm not going to say that was the reason why they were so harsh towards me, but uh, I uh, was lobbying for the bill. The bill didn't pass, and once again, the people that killed it were lawyers, the Bar Association, because they make so much money off of our individual tragedies as families. And, um, you know, a couple of uh, state senators um, have now – said we have a fatherlessness epidemic in our country yeah um, and it's true i mean you know most, most of the guys i went was i was in prison with uh came from families with no dad so it's mm -hmm. uh it's important it's important to fix the system when you think it's broken you know exactly yeah when it's broken it definitely needs fixed when it's not broke people need to leave it alone mm. um there's a problem on both sides um yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. And dads that are good dads need their children. Moms that are good moms need their children. Now, if they're mm -hmm. not, then we're talking about a whole different situation. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I, you, you, nobody's nobody's perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. We all fail our children. Um, and uh, but I mean, I think of movies like The Godfather. Now, you know. He was the, the 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 Godfather was a terrible person, but he was a very good father. Yeah. Um, and, and he loved his kids. I mean, we all, you know, you, there's no such thing as a perfect parent. So I mean, That's we're going to be a, we're going to be a product of. Uh, and if you believe in Buddhism, um, you know, we we choose our parents. I mean, after we die and we go back to the little hallway of being recycled called the Bardo, we choose the next life to for some reason to you know, to, to right a wrong of the past or whatever. I mean, so we're, I believe we choose our parents. Well, I have to admit, I don't know anything about Buddhism. Um, but, you know, I could make that a whole nother show of just talking, because I'm intrigued by different religions. Um, I could make that a whole nother show talking to people that believe in different religions than I do, because I don't have a problem with that. You know, some people are just like, oh God, if you're not Christian, mm -mm, no, not listening to you. Mm -hmm. I'm not like that. 
I like hearing other people's religion, other people's beliefs. Um, I'll share with you what I believe and, but I'm not going to say that you're wrong because I don't want you to tell me I'm wrong. Well, I grew up in the church. That's where my music, that's where my music career began. So, right. uh, I, I, so how I, did you I, get through Buddhism? I, and I know I said I'm not going to talk about politics or religion, but I'm <laughs> interested now. So people watching, if you don't like it, sorry. Um, mm -hmm. It's my show. Um, how did you go from that to Buddhism? Uh, I've, just always I've, 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 traveled, I've traveled the world quite a bit. And, uh, you know, uh, a little bit different than some uh, some other musicians. I mean, I from from Nicaragua to Norway, I mean, I've I've traveled in, you know, my my older brother's married to a woman from the Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we uh, we've we've, you know. Mm, why did we freeze? Come back, Christian. Why did I lose him? Okay, hopefully it comes back. I'm not sure what's happening here. Hmm. Okay, we completely lost him. All right, hopefully he's going to come back in. There he is. I'm back. Here we You're go. back? Okay, good. I didn't know what happened. Uh, but okay, you were traveling back. around? Yeah, I was just uh, traveling. I mean, I've always kept an open mind and listened to other people's opinions, and, and I've found something beautiful about all of them, uh, all the religions. Uh, I, I really got into Buddhism just because – Um. It was a religion where that that basic tenant was if you can't do something good, the least you could do is not do anything bad. You know, which reminded me of my grandmother, you know, saying, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. The golden rule. Yep. And, and I just like simple. I mean, I, I believe we're just supposed to be good to each other. We're supposed to love each other. Um, I don't yeah. want my next neighbor to be my competitor the way, it, you know, it seems like that in the States a, a lot of the time where – we, we used to be a village, you know, we used to have villages and now we have individual homes where, you know, the next door neighbor, you know, we, we, we look at them like, uh, what's wrong with that guy? And, you know, um, yeah. we're, we're supposed, we're not supposed to be like that. So. Yeah. Um, and especially yeah. right now with this pandemic and the way that the, the world is, especially the United States is, you know, just be nice. Why? Mm -hmm. I don't. It might be the last thing you do. You don't. You don't know it. We don't know anymore. I mean, we could get sick tomorrow. So exactly. Um, I mean, and it's not that hard to be kind. You know, it yeah. it takes so much less energy to be nice than it does to be ugly to somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, I, yeah. I don't. I have a very good friend, Jeff Neely, who's in a band called the Slow Grass Rollers, and they're um, they remind me a little bit of the Grateful Dead but they have a song called be so good to everyone you love. And it is one of the most uplifting and joyous songs you'll hear. Um, and it's how we all should, we, we should really listen to them. I'm writing that down. Cause I'm going to look it up. Slow grass rollers. Yeah. They get, they've, uh, they've been in the studio around the same time I have. And, uh, um, and I borrow their session drummer all the time. So, uh, We've gotten to be good buds. All right. I'm going to have to look that up. I was thinking when you said the name of the band, I thought this is going to be a bluegrass band. Yeah, they're very, very bluegrass. I mean, they got, they, oh, they are. Little, oh, okay. They're a little, a little, you know, kind of like a Grateful Daddy bluegrass. Um, a lot of mandolin, a lot of washboard, a lot of old style. I cool. mean, they even use that, you know, that uh, mouth harp and all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, they're just super talented guys who are just. I'll have to, yeah, I'll look those, them up for sure. All right. Well, I want to get to the next part of your story because this is the, well, let me go back just a minute. Um, yeah. 
I would when I was reading this. Now, most of this last album that you put out, you wrote mm -hmm. while you were in prison. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Sorry. So was it just most of it or like you wrote the whole album while you were in um, there? Just no, uh, most of it. I mean, when I got okay. out, I wrote stuff. I mean, I wrote a life like this um, after a, a night, uh, actually uh, for our Scottish viewer, um, my family splurged. Um, you know, we, we have a very modest family. Uh, you know, we're, we're just on that middle class cusp, I think. Um, and, uh, we don't have a lot of extra, but we have everything we need. And exactly. they, splur they splurged and they got me uh, a kilt made out of uh, my Montgomery tartan from Scotland and, uh, and had it shipped over here. Um, and, oh, wow. uh, you know, I, I, I broke down in tears. It was right after I got out of jail. Um, and it was just such a beautiful moment. Um, and I was just, you know, it was, it, it feels great to be loved and to, yeah. and to have a life, to have a life like that. I mean, we were all at the dinner table. I mean, um, you know, and we, we love being around each other. We love spending time together and it would it just made me feel like uh, the most important person in the world that day. So. Um, oh yeah. Well, I'm glad you told that story because I was going to ask you about the kilt because of the picture that you posted. So oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's the Montgomery, Montgomery family uh, tartan kilt. Um, that is that is so cool. I love that. Um, yeah. Okay, so the next thing that I just loved when I read in your story, I think this is just the sweetest thing. So you swore off women, or not didn't swear off women, but you swore off marriage, and yeah. then you meet the first girl that you ever kissed. You ran yeah. into her. Yeah. Was it a yeah. planned run in or you seriously just like accidentally ran into each other one day? Um, yeah, we, we kind of, we, you know, before I had gotten divorced and, uh, she, she had gotten divorced, was going through a really bad divorce too. Um, we had kind of looked at each other on Facebook and I sent her a message, you know, a couple of years prior to getting together saying, Hey, uh, do you remember that time I kissed you behind the library? And, uh, and, <laughs> and she didn't, you know, she, she didn't reply to me. And, um, and one day I was in my, the, the, her hometown and I, you know, was going for a, a run and she, she had mentioned something about going for a run too. And, um, uh, and so we, uh, we ended up meeting up at the beach and, and talking and it was, you know, she, when we were kids, her dad was a lobster, lobster fisherman and my grandfather was a fisherman. And so I'd always see her and check her out and, you know, finally convinced her to give me a kiss. And then we never saw each other again. Oh. And, and then, uh, you know, 20 something years later, we, uh, I mean, we were just kids. I mean, maybe 15, 16 at the time. Um, and, uh, and then we ran into each other and we, we decided we were going to go out to dinner. And then, um, um, you know, I asked her just spur of the moment, Hey, you want to go mountain climbing? And she said, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we ended up climbing, uh, Mount Washington in New Hampshire together. And then, uh, um, we just enjoy a lot of the same things. We, you know, we, we fish, um, she goes hunting with me. She, uh, she, I mean, we have a lot in common. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we thought we'd never get married again. And then six months later, I, I just was sitting in her grandmother's driveway with her after visiting her grandma. And I said, you want to marry me? And she's just like, yep. Yeah. And so I want to go buy a ring? And she was like, yep. I said, okay, let's do it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and we, we, you know, we had a, we had a nice quiet little wedding. And I mean, I don't think, you know, we've been married now for a couple of years. We've never had a fight, never had an argument really. Uh, um, you know, we just, it, it's pretty wild when you just enjoy being around somebody and she, she encourages the heck out of me as far as music is concerned. Yeah. So, you know, she's, she's make, she's checking on the meatballs right now and she keeps looking, looking in the, you know, smiling at me. And, you know, <laughs> Oh, no. that's awesome. You can bring her on if she wants to come. Oh, she is the most shy woman you've ever met. 
Oh, I just, I love y'all's story. I love your story. It's just, it's so heartwarming. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it, for people that read it or hear it on here, you know, it gives people hope. I think yeah. that, yeah, it gives people hope that, you know, love is real and it's out there and you don't necessarily have to go searching for it. I feel like your truest love is going to find you. It's just yeah. going to happen. You don't have to go searching for it. Yeah. Uh, that's what I think about it. But and anyway, um, I found that no, no matter what happens, you can always start over. There's nothing stopping yeah. anybody from starting. Exactly. It's up to yeah. you and what you decide to do. Choices, life choices are yours. And right. You know, whether you make good choices or bad choices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's totally up to you and what you decide to do. Yeah. Well, I think it's time for another song. Okay. Well, on a, on a much, uh, a much um, different pace as far as love stories is concerned, this is a song that's on the next record. Um, it's called Don't Call Me Baby. It was a Las Vegas song. Um, uh, it was about a nightmare where uh, I was with a woman who took me out to the desert. She made me dig my own grave, and it was the weirdest, weirdest dream. But I remembered it so vividly. Every time she shot me, she said, "Don't worry, baby. It's okay, baby." And I just so I wrote this song. <laughs> oh, that's pretty. <laughs> All right, You've got me interested now. <laughs> Out in the desert, there's a legend of mean little mama carrying a gun. She found Jesus in a paper cup. The beat comes out, it all just has to love. She was a little pill to swallow, lazy. But she's on top, she'll drive you crazy. Ain't no stuff gonna save me. Please just don't call me, baby. Be by blue is what you say. She gonna love till the end of the day. She gonna be your favorite high. Feel like you live long after you die. She's a bit of building swallow lately. She's on top, she'll drive you crazy. Have no skirt gonna save me. Please just don't call me, baby. <laughs> Oh, 
I couldn't find the mute button <laughs> to unmute it. Oh, okay. That was a crazy song. I can imagine how you felt dreaming that. It was, uh, it was pretty funny. You know, I woke up and I was telling my wife about the dream. She's like, was it me? And I'm like, I don't know. It could have been you. And she, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it was, it's kind of one of those like, uh, um, 1950s style song uh you know when we recorded it it turned it's it's turned into a real big band feel yeah, and, uh, yeah. You know, i could see it in a quentin tarantino movie you know uh but oh, uh, yeah it's 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 a good tune it is it's a really catchy tune and like you said the like that big band feel yeah like could be in a mob movie or something for sure um yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, that's crazy. Isn't it crazy how you dream things that are just like so off the wall and it's so vivid, but like, you know, your wife was asking, was it me? And you're like, I don't know. You can't really tell who the people are in the dream. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I dream like that sometimes. I'll have like weird dreams and then I'm like, I have no idea who it is. No, um, no. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Um, well, I don't know if you had planned on playing this song or not. Maybe, hopefully, I don't know. Um, but I got to ask you about it because I think everybody can relate to it. And yeah. everybody that has a sibling anyway. And yeah. you posted it on the story today. Um, the song that you've got, Warm Grave. Yeah. So that's about your brother. Is that on this coming up album as well? Um, it is. Yeah, it's it's coming up. Um yeah, it was uh, my brother and I, he's, he's, I have several siblings. Um, like I said, you know, uh, my, my friends tell me that uh, I make Hemingway look like a Cub Scout, um, you know, <laughs> as far as adventures are concerned. Um, I have a half brother um, from my dad's first marriage who is a half Aleutian Indian from Alaska. He's my older brother. He's my half brother. And then I have a half brother in Florida and a half sister um, uh, in Massachusetts, um, all from different moms. My dad was quite a handsome man, um, and very, <laughs> he he only lived to be fifty four. But um, you know, he he was married seven times. Oh um, wow! <laughs> yeah, I he enjoyed mean, those years. Yes, he he definitely enjoyed those years. Um, yeah. I think maybe he just knew he had a short fuse and he wouldn't be around forever. Um, so he lived, uh, he lived as much as he could, but, uh, my, my biological brother, um, my full br brother, Kurt, um, he and I, um, we've always had a relationship where, um, we would be best friends, fishing buddies, and then something would happen. Um, it was usually a fight between our wives or, or something, but, um, we'd stop talking for, and sometimes years at a time, um, oh, wow. And uh, this this song was just kind of uh, my so solidifying our friendship, um, you know, uh, letting him know that uh, uh, no matter what, you know, we're we're always, you know, we're always going to be best friends. Um, you know, he's down in Florida. He lives in Spring Hill and I'm up here in Massachusetts. And um, so, you know, it's funny. I was born. Uh oh, you froze again. Ooh. Okay. I'm, Last thing you know, I heard was where you were born. Yeah, I was born in Jupiter, West Palm Beach. And uh, my brother. I um, see you now. Yeah, sorry about that. It was uh, the, the sun went down and the candles yeah. that I had weren't <laughs> cutting anymore. They looked cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, my, I was born in Jupiter, West Palm beach and, uh, my brother was born up here in Massachusetts. So we've kind of swapped spots, but. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Mm. Now has he heard the song? Oh yeah. He cried like a baby when he heard it. Um, he's, okay. a, he's, I'm six, two, he's six, four. Um, and he's uh, far more muscular than I am. And, uh, he, 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 he's a very emotional boy. He cries a lot. Um, I, if, he's, if he's watching right now, 
your brother loved you and it, you're welcome. I know it's a beautiful song. <laughs> All right. Now, were you planning on playing that on here or ending with something different? I was going to play something different. I That one, uh, that one I don't have the guitar for. Oh, okay. Um, so I have to wait for the album to come out. Jeez. Not long, I, you know. I love when y'all just do that to me. Sarcasm <laughs> hopefully was noted there. <laughs> now, I will patiently wait for it. Um, yeah, I'm anxious to hear that one, um, just because I can so relate to it. And it's funny that you mentioned, you know, all your half siblings and all that. I totally can relate because I have in total, there is set. I have six other siblings, three sisters, three brothers. Yep. So I have a half brother that lives in Florida, a half sister I'm not sure where she's at because she won't talk to any of us. Um, that And so those are from the same dad. Then with the same dad, but a different mom is my full sister. And then I have two stepbrothers and a stepsister. But my two stepbrothers and stepsister, they're like full siblings. They've been around since I was five years old and we were all raised together. So... Yeah, I can relate to that, all those different places that they come from. Um, but me and my full sister um, have a relationship like you were talking about with your brother. But we've never went years. The, we've went a couple months and that might be the longest. But I mean, we will love each other like best friends. And she is my best friend. I love my yep. sister to death. I would do anything for her. Um but then sometimes we can get in some knockdown drag outs. I yep. mean, it, you know, it, I think that's just a sibling thing. It just happens. I think everybody can, you know, relate to that. Um, but now do any of your other siblings or did you come from a musical family? Um, yeah, I come from a very musical family. Um, my, my, uh, my uncle was a pretty good banjo player and my grandfather had a wonderful voice um, on my mom's side. Um, and uh, my, you know, my mom had a really good voice. And then on my, on my dad's side, I mean, uh, my, my cousin, Sarah, in, who lives in Denmark, um, she is, uh, she was managing one of the biggest record stores in town, very musical person. And uh, my cousin Morgan um, and Bianca are both uh, very, you know, avid music fans too, um, over there. Um, my cousin Jesse and her husband, Henrik, um, you know, uh, huge, uh, Jimi Hendrix fan, seventies, you know, music, uh, um, you know, my, my cousin Jesse just turned 70. So happy birthday. For me if She's in Denmark. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Happy birthday. She, uh, she, she's a wonderful person. Um, yeah, an angel. And, uh, yeah, we have a, a very, very, very much uh, just immersed family when it comes to music. Um, uh, yeah. Every, and and everybody's kind of followed my career to see what happens. Um, of no. course. Yeah, I would hope so. Now, are mm -hmm. you the only one that's pursuing music? Is there anyone else in your family that's pursuing, you know, playing music as a as a career? Yeah, just me. I'm the only one. The last oh. one standing. Yeah. Well, not too many to keep up with in the family then. It'd be easy if it's just you. Um, yeah. All right. Now, in a couple of your songs, um, and we talked about this a little bit before we went live, um, but I want to get into a little bit more detail. In a couple of your songs, I very easily detected um, some Native American. Yeah. Um, and so you do have some Native American in you, you said. Yeah, on my mom's side, we have uh, we go back to the Wampanoag Indians, uh, who were the the Indians who met the Pilgrims. Um, my my genealogy is it's pretty crazy. Um, here, uh, my mother's parents um, in Massachusetts, uh, we mm -hmm. always speak we speak about North Shore and South Shore. Um, my grandfather, my mother's father, um, his family. Um, half is from Wigtonshire, Scotland. The other half are very blue blooded, 
Americans um, that go all the way back to the Mayflower. I think uh, like two thirds of the Mayflower are my distant grandparents. Oh, wow. Um, and, uh, you know, with Halloween coming too, uh, two of the women who were hanged for witchcraft in Salem, as uh, everybody knows, uh, two of them, uh, Rebecca Nurse and Susanna Martin, were my ninth great grandmothers. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. <gasps> that is so cool. That's on my grandmother's side. But uh, on my granddad's side, we have uh, we go back to the pilgrims and the Native Americans that met them. So, uh, um, you know, if there's a it, it's a pretty cool history. And then on my yeah. on my father's side. My father's side in Denmark, um, we, uh, you know, having more of that Viking heritage, we were pretty much immersed in the that area of northern Europe. I mean, my, my 25th or 6th great-grandfather was Harold the Bluetooth, the first king of Denmark, the first Christian king. Uh, his symbol is the Bluetooth symbol on your phone. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, I didn't his, know his, that. His, yeah, his rune is what his, his name, every time you – log into something with Bluetooth or play music on from your phone to your car. That's uh, that symbol is my whatever 25th or whatever great grandfather. Um, so, oh, wow. That yeah. is interesting. And I thought I had an interesting family history. That's nothing compared to yours. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. My, well, I mean, you, you got to take the good with the bad. I mean, um, my ninth great uncle was the first teenager hanged in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Um, he got a little too friendly with a cow and um, he was hanged um, for that. So, oh my God. <laughs> it's a, if, if you, his last name, his last name is Granger. And if you, if you Google that, if you Google the first teenager hung in, in um, Plymouth, Massachusetts in the 1600s, that's him. He's my, oh, he's no. a great, 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 great uncle, not grandfather. So I escaped um, anything being passed down to me. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, yeah, I have, um, well, I am um, Lumbee Indian. Obviously I'm not full blooded. Um, my father has no Indian, but my mother is full blooded. And so we're Lumbee Indians from the, from North Carolina, Eastern North Carolina. And I think I may say this wrong, but I think it's my fifth great uncle. So great, 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 great uncle. However many greats. Um, Henry Barry Lowry was the mm -hmm. first Indian outlaw. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, which is, I think is pretty cool. And one of the, my cousins um, was a fabulous artist, fabulous artist. And he did multiple paintings of Henry Barry Lowry. And um, it's just, it's, it's just really cool heritage. If you dig into the Indian Native American history there, um, a lot of cool stuff, cool history with, in reference to Lumbies. And then I think you said, what was your relation to the Sioux Indians? Did you say uh, you had a, I don't, I don't have any relation to the Sioux um, uh, genetically, but um, the beginning of my song, five horses, we took a recording yeah. of a okay. Sioux, Indian, Sioux Indian dance uh, in the 1950s. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I, I use a lot of um, Native American visuals in my songs, um, yeah, videos. You know? um, my new song, American Fire, which is kind of taken off. Um, you know, we uh, we have the Indian chief on his horse looking at the fire, uh, you know, blazing. Um, it's, yeah. uh, it's, it's kind of a nice, uh, you know, I tell people all the time that uh, we've had 400 years of English rule in the United States, and we have the 400th anniversary of Plymouth is coming up and that um, uh, we, uh, we should be asking the natives to uh, release the curse um, that 2020 has plagued us with um, <coughs> because of, uh, I mean, you know, it, it, it seems almost uh, coincidental that the 400th anniversary of the beginning of the country, uh, you know, was plagued by a pandemic, you know, so. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, mm -hmm. now, yeah, 
That's interesting. I didn't think about that. Hmm. Yeah, I like, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I like the song. Um, and I definitely get the message. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, sadly, I had to ask you to refrain from that one. Um, just in case there's any children watching. Um, <laughs> or make it PG. Um, yeah. Yeah, because when I, the first time I heard it, I was like, whoa. <laughs> you know, like caught my attention. And I was like, eh, all right. I can go with this. Um, but another one of your songs that I really liked and can relate to is Look at My Child. Yep. I really like that. What was your inspiration for, I mean, besides the obvious, did you have any other inspiration for writing that song? Well, I, the, other than the fact that I've grown up in a society that's been at war um, since as long as I can remember. Um, yeah. And uh, I have a very close cousin. I mean, sometimes we even call each other brother and sister. Um, and she has two sons who, you know, they, all of my nieces and nephews call me uncle cuckoo. And yeah. um, so yeah. It's, yeah, it's something she started. She's kind of a pain in the ass. But um, she, her, son, her sons um, and I are very close. I mean, I, I think the world of both of them are almost to the point where, where I think they can do no wrong, which is, uh, gets me in trouble all the time. But um, <laughs> you know, my, my nephew, Christopher, is going to play baseball for Salve Regina College in Newport, Rhode Island. And um, – He's just a phenomenal student, phenomenal ball player. Um, but his father went to Afghanistan and uh, he came back a completely broken person. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, we heard stories about him cleaning, cleaning uh, um, the pieces of his friends out of some of the vehicles that had gotten hit, and uh, um, and it, it forever definitely forever changed. I mean, I mean, granted he married my cousin, so he was broken before he went, but you know, he, uh, he, he came back, he came back worse. Um, yeah. And, uh, but, but it's, uh, it's just, I'm, um, I'm, I'm at that point now where, you know, I would never not support somebody who joined the military on my behalf. I would just, I just want to feel like it's on my behalf again, instead of some yeah. rich guy or overseas. I mean, if you're, if you're going somewhere to defend my honor in my old age, um, no, now, now that I'm in my forties, I'm not re really war ready and I can't go. But uh, if you're going to go defend um, the character of our country, which is supposed to be this welcoming, um, amazing place where everybody has a chance to be happy um, but it, it doesn't seem like that anymore. It seems like we're sending these kids to die for the cause of a few individuals who want some minerals or mining rights or oil or well, for whatever reason they're over there. Um, I don't ever remember the heroin problem being so bad in the United States since, you know, from before these wars started, but now it's everywhere. And you have to think that some of these politicians might have their hand in the till and, yeah. uh, I mean, I don't think we have senators or House of Representatives anymore who aren't millionaires. So uh, it's pretty yeah. scary. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely is. And I think, you know, even if people don't have, you know, a son or daughter themselves or brother or sister, you know, somebody directly close to them that is serving, surely they know somebody. Mm. And if you've ever seen someone come back from that situation. They're not the same. They're affected in some way or another. And I mean, I have a son-in-law that's ex-army that deals with that on a daily basis. I, yep. my other son-in-law is a current um, career Air Force pilot. So I have very close ties to the military and so yeah, I I related to that song so much. We we see how it we see how it also rolls into the way our country polices itself too. Um, 
you know, veterans get special, you know, treatment when it comes to joining the police force. And these are gentlemen who have been trained to kill in defense of themselves, um, who are now trained to kill their own citizens. And it's, uh, um, you know, it's a situation where, I mean, other countries, I mean, you know, my, in order to become a police officer in Denmark, you have to go to school for four years. You have to get a degree. Um, and a lot of it's based on psychology. I mean, yeah. you, kill, you know, so many criminals are killed in the United States every year. Um, it, 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 the same stuff doesn't happen in other countries. So, I mean, we're obviously doing something wrong. And I think a lot of it, has to do, a lot of it has to do with the, uh, the way we hire these broken people who come back to, you know, to, to walk the streets with the firearm. It's, it's scary. Yeah. There, well, there needs to be so much more for our veterans. Um, I'm Absolutely. such an advocate for veterans and what they deserve when they get, you know, while they're yep. serving, currently serving and after. And I just feel like they don't get what they deserve. Um, but as far as the police, yeah, there needs to be so much more training, I feel like. Um, I like the four year thing. I like that. I mean, you know, by profession, even though I'm not currently working as I am a registered nurse, I had to go two years for that degree. Mm -hmm. And then you think you can go to school and be a police officer in six months. Yeah. No, it's actually 12 weeks or 21 weeks, I think. Or, yeah. Um, but it strikingly odd. Um, yeah. but I mean, and I am all for our police officers. Um, I support them, um, as long as they're doing what they should do. I mean, you've got yeah. good and bad in anything. You have good and bad in anything. Um, the bad ones I don't support by no means. Um, the good ones I do, but I think mm -hmm. all across the board, yeah, something different needs to be done. When, when I when I was a boy, I got in trouble, and I remember the, the gentleman's name was Officer Haywood, and my grandfather came to pick me up at the station, and he said, he said, Mr. Montgomery, your grandson will never do what you, they said he did, and I, you know, kind of nodded my head, like, in agreement with him, and he goes, and if he did, I'm sure you'd want to take care of it at home, and I I can tell you that by the time my granddad was done with me, I was begging to be, to, just throw me in jail. Just arrest me, please. Oh, uh, yeah. I never, I never got in trouble again. And, you know, years later, I became very friendly with uh, that police officer. And, uh, and he said, you know, our job was to protect you kids through that period of time in your life where you thought you were invincible and you were completely full of crap. Exactly. And, uh, and nowadays, it seems as though the system is more geared towards getting you in the system to make money so that you, yeah. you know, you're immediately, you're immediately, you know, set on a path at that point to get into more and more trouble. Um, Absolutely. And I just wish I'm, I'm one of those folks who believe that police should take the least intrusive approach. Just stay out of the way. You know, they're trained now to be so suspicious and go after everybody yeah. it's like, just let us live our lives for god's sake well my grandfather took care of me just fine that that yeah. little crap down the street his dad's going to take care of him too if you tell him so <laughs> and what happened to innocent until proven guilty oh, now absolutely yeah. until proven innocent right and yeah but along the same lines um as you it was i guess about it had to be like eight years ago, seven, eight years ago. My son um, decided he was going to take him and his um, stepbrother, half brother, I don't know, brother, um, decided about 10 o'clock at night they were going to go four wheeling in his <laughs> truck in yeah. a place that they had no business going four wheeling. Well, then, and it wasn't even my son driving, he let his brother drive. Well, he got it, his truck. And that was the first thing because he knew he was not supposed to let anyone else drive his truck mm -hmm. except his dad or me. And so that was his first mistake was letting his brother drive. Second mistake was going to this location four wheeling at 10 o'clock at night because he didn't even have his after nines. <laughs> so 
And that's why he let his brother drive. So he was halfway thinking, you know, because he knew he didn't have his after nines. So he's going to let his brother drive since it was 10 o'clock. But they go to this place four wheeling. His brother gets the truck stuck. And lo and behold, here comes the police. And my son was begging this cop. Please just take me to jail. Don't call my dad. Don't call my dad. Just take me to jail. Arrest me. I don't care. And the police yeah. officer was like, no, I think I'll let your dad come and handle it. So it was the same situation. So, I mean, yeah. I was really glad that it was a police officer like that. You know, now, today, they would have just hauled his butt off to jail and then called us. But, um, yeah, my son was sweating bullets until his dad got, got, got there and... Yeah. He mm -hmm. never did that. So, <laughs> I, that's, I, love, I love those natural consequences. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I remember I was more scared of my parents than anything if I, and not because I had bad parents. My parents were great. But if I did wrong, I had to face the consequences. Mm -hmm. And they weren't good. But, yeah. you know, anymore... I think maybe partially that's why cops are the way they are now is because parents don't parent like they used to. Yep. I hear you. Sadly, 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 but, um, wow. I cannot believe an hour has gone by already. Yeah. Wow. I'm talk. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I know. That's why I love this. I get to talking with whoever's on and the time just like flies by. Um, so what else do you want us to know about this upcoming album? What are we looking for? What can well, we expect if anybody, to see? If, uh, you know, the, the next record's called Prince of Poverty. It's uh, It'll be out before the end of the year. Um, and, uh, you know, my website is... Uh, www.kmwkb.com. You know, uh, my name is spelled with a K, not a C. So it's Christian Montgomery and the Winter Kill Band. Um, you know, you can find us on Facebook. Um, you know, we're, we're starting to get some recognition. And uh, I mean, uh, we're almost up to 800 fans on Facebook and we're, we're doing pretty good on the Instagram. And, um, you know, we're, we're starting to, uh, to get a lot of press. People are very interested in our style of country music. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we're, we're different. Um, no, I, I, uh, I have nothing against the current, um, style of country music. That's really popular right now. Um, you know, it seems like Kenny Chesney's becoming the, uh, the new, um, what's his Margaritaville guy. Um, you know, uh, I can't even remember his name now. Um, Brian. Not Luke Bryan, no. Uh, who sang uh, Wasted Away Again? Oh, oh, oh. Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy Buffett. Seems like yeah. the No Shoes no shoes Army is becoming the next Jimmy Buffett type thing. Um, and uh, I'm hoping my blue collar message kind of gets across to people. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, country music has always been the, the music of the, of the working man. It's always been, uh, yeah. it's always been the, 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 it hasn't, you know, right now I see country music sometimes more as like propaganda. Um, you know, we, it used to be about questioning authority. Um, it, it used to be about individuality and not being conforming into uh, these giant groups of beach blanket beer drinkers. Um, so I'm nothing against that. I mean, we need to relax. We need Jimmy Buffett's. We need Kenny Chesney's to help us take the edge off. But we also need we also need those songs that motivate us to ask for a little bit more an hour to ask for better uh, working conditions and ask for uh, more respect for our labor too. So. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, Oh, I mean, one thing for sure about your music and what I love um, your songs are, and that's why I love country music so much that the majority of country music is, storytelling telling a story from something that you or someone you know 
has experienced mm -hmm. and you're, you're telling something real and relatable. Um, and that's what I love about your music. Cause it's definitely that um, yeah. every song that I listened to from you sounded like, I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, but sounded like something that you experienced. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not one to, uh, I'm not one to, uh, to write just to write. Um, you know, if, yeah. if it didn't, if it didn't happen, I'm, I'm, you know, that's how songwriting happens with me. It's either a phrase or a feeling that, uh, of something that it was going on or happening or a way to describe something that happened to me. And, and then I just kind of put the music and the words around it. Um, so yeah, you know, life is pretty inspiring. Yeah, absolutely. And that, I mean, that was something I definitely wanted to ask you is like where your inspirations come from for your writing. I mean, obviously it's all like real life stuff, but do you wake up in the middle of the night sometime and something is just like popped in your head and you have to jot it down? Um, yeah, that, that happened. My wife will tell you that happens a lot. Um, she'll give me that look and go, I should go read my book. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to, uh, you know, as soon as she sees me pull out the guitar, she's like, you're going to be a while. I'm like, I might. Be. And, um, yeah. You know, and then I'll throw something up on YouTube and she'll listen to She'll be like, hey, I was listening to that on the way to work. That's pretty wild that you just came up with that. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, this or this happened. Um, yeah. My, now, uh, when you start writing or you have to see it through till it's done or. Yeah. And it's it's yeah. weird. It, it, hap it happens really quick. Um, and I, I have to I have to get it on tape uh, or throw it up on YouTube real quick in order to remember it because I. I forget them as fast as I write them sometimes. I mean, Oh, wow. I mean, I've, I have I've been, you know, I, I got out of jail. Um, it was a year, August 12th. And um, in a matter of one year, I've got 26 songs almost finished in the studio. I mean, I did the 16 wow. on the great church, this 10, and then I've probably got another two dozen of them up on YouTube um, that, uh, you know, where we're, we're going to work on. And my, my producer is pretty psyched, you know, cause he's, he's always got work. Um, and, uh, no, we've, we've been courting a couple of record labels and I think they like the idea of, um, that I can kind of churn out material this fast. So, yeah. yeah. So you just, as soon as it comes in your mind, you're writing down the lyrics, mm -hmm. doing the music, and then you just put a raw video up. Yep. Yep. Wow. Okay. I'm going to have to, I didn't check out your YouTube. I'm going to have to check that out then. Yeah. Um, like the, the other night, uh, um, we, uh, my wife and I were sitting at, on the couch and I kind of, I looked at her and, you know, she said she had to dye her roots, you know, and, uh, um, she's going to kill you for saying that on here. <laughs> I know. Um, uh, but it, uh, it was, uh, um, um, I wrote this song called we made this house our home. It's on my YouTube channel. And my, a lot of my friends have called me and said, man, that's absolutely a beautiful song. And, uh, you know, the, the uh, um, the, the lyrics to it came so quickly as I was, you know, talking to my wife, um, you know, the, the, the first verse is, um, is, uh, it's uncomfortable to think about yesterday. Your hair was brown, but now it's white as snow. Um, and, um, you know, the, 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 the second verse is, um, she jokes about fooling around. She wouldn't chance it anyhow, but what a way to go. Um, I just you know the whole, the whole, the whole song was just about growing old together. And, you know, like, my, yeah. I mean, you know, my, my, my wife and I kind of, we have this thing, you know, we look at each other and we just say forever, you know, yeah. we know, you know, we know, we know that this oh, was, I love that. you know, so, uh, you know, it's uh no matter what forever, you know, we're going to just keep plugging away and try to, and just try to have the best life we possibly can. Yeah. I yeah. love that. That's awesome. I love that. All right. Well, I am going to have to go to your YouTube then and check that out and all your other stuff that you've got thrown up there now that I know how you do things. 
And that's quite impressive. That's, that is a cool way to do it. Um, yeah. So, and I'm anxiously awaiting the release of this next album. That's going to be fun. So what do you want to take us out with? Um, well, I'll, I'll leave you with this song. It's called that bird won't fly. Um, and I wrote this, this is about my wife. It was my love song to my wife. Um, it was, uh, you know, she, she just had so many reasons. I mean, me going to jail and all the baggage that comes with having a divorce and kids and, and, uh, she had every reason to fly, but she didn't. So, uh, I wrote, uh, that bird won't fly, you know? Awesome. It goes like this. There's a love, she'll be in it. Right or wrong, she's got me singing this song. Baby, you. You take a minute before you decide if she's staying night. Is that bird won't fly? That bird won't fly. Yeah, that bird won't fly. If you make rules, she gonna break them. You can't decide who she's got in mind. Baby, you take a minute. She's dropping hints. Of who she wants to live. Is that girl fly? That girl fly. Yeah, that girl will fly. That girl will fly. Something about the way she moves when you walk in the room. Something about the way she turns your head. Sometimes I think it's make believe the way she brings me to my knees with black magic that I have never felt. There's a place that I go and I fall into dreams. There it's still you and me and the memories of the times that pass. They seem to last for perfect and broken. It's no way to sleep. I just keep on praying. There's gotta be a reason why that bird won't be fly. That girl won't fly. Yeah, that girl won't fly. That girl won't fly. Something about the way she moves the moment you walk in the room. Something about the way she turns your head. I love that. Thanks. Now, that one I did listen to earlier. Yep. So I heard that one um, on Spotify. Um, but I like just the acoustic version mm -hmm. of it thanks so i'm probably gonna love what you have on youtube then if it's well, just yeah like, just just me and a guitar yeah i you know i love i love a good concert don't get me wrong so i i love the full band um but sometimes it's just really nice just to hear the stripped down 
just you and the guitar version. Yeah. Yeah. I do that a lot. I do a lot of uh, acoustic shows right now. So it's yeah. just me and a guitar for the well, time yeah. being. Yeah, a lot of people are doing that right now. It's all over the place. So I'm really hoping that it's going to stick a little bit. Like even when everybody goes back out to play in shows and stuff, just like mm -hmm. maybe one song in the whole set, just play us one of those good old stripped down versions, you know? Yeah. No, I hear, I agree. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what I prefer. I like, I, I, I like, playing just me and a guitar um that's where i'm most comfortable you know? yeah you know without all the smoke and the lights and all the mm -hmm. effects and you know all the craziness that you know is in concerts nowadays but yeah i just like it stripped back mm -hmm. down to its roots i just i love that well right. i have loved talking with you and learning more about you and your lovely wife who is back there somewhere. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I'm really super jealous that you're getting ready to eat spaghetti with deer meat in it. Oh yeah. And I always say deer meat. I will probably never say venison. I just, yeah. Unless I go to a restaurant or something, it's, I'm just not politically correct about deer meat. I hear you. It is what it is. <laughs> I agree. But I have enjoyed having you on so much. We'll have to do this again. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah, like around maybe when your album drops. So we'll get, to, we'll get mm -hmm. to hear some of those. And so anybody that is watching, um, please go follow him on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all that good stuff. Spotify or Apple, wherever you listen to music. And stream it, download it, because you don't want to miss it. Yeah, so we've got, we've got some limited edition sweatshirts and t-shirts and CDs and all that jazz too. So you can find that on my website. Um, yeah. Help, check out help the merch people. for sure. Yeah. So yep. I love, I love people's merch. I love it. I'm like a t-shirt. I don't know what you want to call it. I have tons. I love nice. just, yeah, I love that. So I'll have to check all that out for sure. All right, y'all heard it. Go check everything out on his website, Facebook, IG, all that good stuff. Y'all know all the socials and how it works, so go to it. And thank you very much for being on, and we'll do this again. You're welcome. I appreciate it. All right, everybody have a good night. Until then, y'all stay safe. Bye. All right.